Hello, Paula. Can you hear me? Yes. We see you. Can you hear me well? You're, fro yes. you're frozen. Really? You're in freeze. We can hear you. Oh, now it's, now, now it's better. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Paula. Hi, Claudia. Welcome to IG Live from Zaid Mocha, head to head. You are the host today. I am your <laughs> guest. So just for our audience to know, I think this is the, the sixth or seventh uh, session of uh, Instagram Live head to head that we are having. And for this time, I invited you to be the host. So um, I let you do your thing. <laughs> Well, thank you everybody who joined and uh, no, thank you uh, regardless of the time, but particularly in this time, uh, they're creating a real sense of community amongst ourselves, our practitioners in the continent that talk a lot, but sometimes are a bit dispersed uh, to reflect mm. on uh, problematics together. And I think mm. that I actually wanted to start by, yes, reflecting on this sense of community, of, of the art community, of thinking, um, you know, how fragile our ecosystem has always been. And, you know, regardless of, of the, this situation at the moment, this COVID stopping of, of, uh, of the events. And, and to kind of just reflect and think about ways that we can strengthen uh, ourselves, especially the ties and the links, whether it's the independent sector, whether it's bigger institutions, uh, museums, um, and, you know, collectors or the public in general. So I actually wanted to ask, start by asking you, um, uh, Koyo, how do you see an institution that is perceived, at least from ourselves, that look at Zeitz as, you know, a big and important, and it, it is big and important, but how do you perceive uh, an institu the role of, of institutions such as the Zeitz in, in, in the future of um, our profession, how, we, how they can, you know, how we can redesign these links between the independent spaces, the smaller spaces, and these bigger um, art spaces, museums? Wow, that's a vast question. <laughs> uh, well, thank you first of all for accepting. Uh, thank you first of all for accepting our invitation to be part of this series. I, we are at the museum. I enjoying them very much, and uh, it's starting to crystallize really as as one of our best programs uh, on the COVID. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's really you know sort of uh, reaching a, a a large a large crowd of people local and wherever. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm one of those. You know, first of all, I I I I mean, I used the term ecosystem because it had sort of you know naturalized itself in the in the language and narratives that we use, but it's not necessarily a word that I like. I like to feel, mm -hmm. I like to speak about the feel though, because mm -hmm. there is, mm -hmm. for me, there is, there are multiple metaphors in, in behind the term the fission, so to speak. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it has space for, you know, a lot of things. And uh, so, and, and I also, the other thing that I, I want to say is also that you know very well that I'm one of those in our field who always considered the continent as one. You know, I mean, yeah. I don't make a big uh, difference between Senegal and Angola, even though, mm -hmm. of course, it is. But uh, I really, yeah. I really believe that one of the things that we, we, we definitely uh, have to sort of reappropriate is it is it is power and and power mm -hmm. comes in a in a in a sense of you know unity and comes in a sense of an army so I mm -hmm. feel much more uh, 
protected and more, more, I feel more strength when I speak of Africa, you know, as opposed <laughs> to speaking of, of Angola or Mozambique yeah. or Senegal or there, you know, and uh, I've been mm. attacked a lot, you know, and uh, misunderstood mm. for whatever, but uh, I strongly believe that this is a kind of a space that we have to reclaim, you know, that doesn't mean that we are not multiple, doesn't mean that we are, means that we have to reject this divisive kind of understanding of our huge and powerful continent, you know. So that's uh, one thing. And uh, uh, the other thing that I think I may, I would like to, to add is that, uh, in that field of work, arts and culture, mm -hmm. but very clearly uh, visual arts that we are mm -hmm. in as, uh, as organizers, as thinkers, mm -hmm. as uh, curators and, and uh, institution builders and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. In that particular field, I, I know that because I am part of it, the, the, mm -hmm. the narrative and the lexicon of that, that narrative has been very, very uh, much defined and created in the last 25 years by, yeah. you know, small initiatives here and there, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. by big institutions, you know. I mean, of course, mm -hmm. we're supposed to what are known, seen, uh, the, 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 art, contemporary art narrative has not been defined internet in the last 20, 25, yeah. or even 30 years by so-called big museums, you know? So it no, is not places at all. like uh, Peche des Calchos in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Luanda, uh, Douala mm -hmm. Art in, uh, in Cameroon, uh, yeah. BZCC in Lagos, my own raw material mm -hmm. in Dakar, and so on mm -hmm. and so on, you know. Uh, so, um, and in 2012, eight years ago, I'm, it's amazing when I think about it, uh, mm -hmm. I, raw material organized uh, the first symposium that was exactly mm -hmm. looking at that, at that, at that subject matter, you know, this mm -hmm. new landscape of contemporary art on the continent. And there were no museums present, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, you know. Uh, so yeah. when, 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 you, when you, you know, that's why I say, you know, uh, institutions like Zaik Smokan, which is absolutely mm -hmm. a very important initiative and uh, it's a, uh, it's a, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of, but it's still a work in progress. I mean, the museum is barely three years old, so we need yeah. we need more time, so to speak. But what I wanted to say is that what I wanted to say is that uh, of course there are lots of expectations. I mean, we at the museum are very aware of the expectation, but are also we are, mm -hmm. we are also very aware of uh, of the of the kind of museum that we want to make. And, and uh, mm -hmm. we spend a lot of time thinking and talking about that. And uh, we put yeah. a lot of energy in, in this kind of, you know, institutional design, yeah. Thing, yeah. so to speak, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, and what, what, I, what I tell uh, my team in terms of scope, in terms of ambition, yeah. Uh, a site for dealing with contemporary artistic practice and intellectual thought. Uh, yeah. However, it is not the only museum on the continent. I, I, I like humility because I think humility is kind of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, uh, I promote the organization, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think that one, one doesn't just, nobody, nobody falls from the sky. There is a genealogy to everything, you know. There is a genealogy mm -hmm. to our own being, and there is a genealogy also to an uh, artistic environment, and there is a genealogy mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, uh, institution building. So uh, yeah. 
I, I, I strongly believe that, I mean, contemporary artists from the continent and curators and writers and everybody related professional have been calling for such an institution for, for a very long time. I mean, if you remember, for mm -hmm. instance, in the late 90s, Mesha Gaba, yeah. out of despair, so to speak, sort of, <laughs> created this amazing work, which is called the Museum of Contemporary African Art, which is a full-fledged uh, yeah, museum. Yeah, one of my favorite novel, ones. You know, so, mm -hmm. so look at that. As, yeah, exactly. Look at it as a, as a, as a desire, as a wish. And, but I also mm -hmm. think that talking genealogy, uh, Zaitz Moka wouldn't be today without, you know, the work of Ooh, all of us, process. you know, in mm -hmm. the field that have been working, uh, you know, that have been working for the last past 20 years. Mm -hmm. South Africa the same, you know, I mean, South Africa sort mm -hmm. of, you know, kind of boasts uh, um, up to date, so to speak, in terms of institution, mm -hmm. I mean, there are, there are lots Many. of museums in this country yeah. and there is a culture you know, of, uh, of uh, caring for the arts in, uh, in a specific way. But the country also has a specific history, which is complicated and which uh, yeah. we, 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 we have to unpack. And I, and, uh, and I, I actually tend to, you know, uh, censor myself, you know, when, uh, since I live in South Africa now, to when it comes to speak about South Africa, because I still believe that I don't know enough on that. I don't know enough mm -hmm. yet to to make certain, to have certain positions. But but uh, uh, but uh, still, I uh, uh, I really think that it is important mm -hmm. to think about genealogy uh, and yeah. look at things in that context. I don't know if I'm answering your question. You are in a way. You are in a way. But I I I also like the fact that uh, you you're you know, the, the Pan-African dream, it's almost like reclaiming the agency of, of, of mm -hmm. the continent. And, um, mm -hmm. and so I think that my question was much more also towards this direction in terms of, because very often what I find from experience is that we talk easily. Uh, obviously, I, I wouldn't like to go into cultural policy because it's, it's a disaster, we know. I mean, as practitioners, we talk and we circulate and we do things easier than uh, any government. And it's a disaster everywhere on the continent. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> South Africa is not better than Senegal. You know? so yes, yeah, so of course. Yeah, we, 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 we know that. But do you actually think that, for example, um, when I think of South Africa, and I know a little bit, I'm also very, very shy to talk about it because I know a little bit, I've been working a little bit with, with institutions there, but do you think that the museum could also be a way to open up a little bit this, the, the landscape of, of the art field in South Africa, which I think that it's strong, has its problems, uh, as everywhere else, but it's also quite self-contained. And I, 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 I always wonder, my, I think that my wish is, yes, that Pan-Africanism and that agency, but in terms of establishing stronger links within, you know, the art spaces within the continent, but also within our practices. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yes, for sure, and uh, and uh, and uh, and I, I mean, ab absolutely. You know, I I was uh, asked when I was appointed last year in one of the uh, news interviews, whatever. Uh, I was asked a question that is similar to to your initial question, sort of like, what am I? bringing what will mm -hmm. Zaitz Mocha be, so to speak, you mm -hmm. know. And, and, uh, and I like to bring back the, the conversation to that genealogy of institution, or institutional genealogy and even genealogy mm -hmm. of the field, so to speak. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and I strongly say that, I mean, I, I just happen to be uh, the director of Zaitz Mocha today because this is what happened. I never, uh, mm -hmm. uh, becoming a museum director was never on my radar. Uh, mm -hmm. 
and at the same time i i am totally cognizant of the of the importance of this museum for our field for mm -hmm. our continent and uh, and i like to say it i mean uh, some people in south africa don't like to hear it but to, absolutely yeah yeah because South Africa is the, the best context so far uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to welcome this, uh, this initiative. And it's also South yeah. Africa that provided the means to, to have this mm -hmm. initiative. So uh, uh, it is very important to always stay. And, 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 and somehow it is, when I say I come, I come from the independent uh, private initiatives, you know, yeah. uh, uh, space that uh, everybody knows very mm -hmm. well. And I also bring it to, uh, to Zaitsmoka while making mm -hmm. a museum, because at the end of the day, one has to ask yourself, uh, you have to ask yourself, what is it, what is your mission, you know, beyond, yeah. you know, the overall kind of grandiloquent mm -hmm. kind of uh, mission statement. The mission is uh, to, to, to serve artists, to present art in the best mm -hmm. way possible. It can be yeah. in a 4,000 square meters galleries, or it can be mm -hmm. in a 50 square meter art center. Your role mm -hmm. is to present the best art possible and translate it the best way possible. So in that sense, for me, somehow size doesn't matter anymore, you know, mm -hmm. content mm -hmm. matters, you know. So, yeah. uh, and, and, and of course we want to, we want to bring uh, as, uh, I mean, to bring as many conversations mm -hmm. as possible, you know, and yeah. as many people as possible. My dream is that, that this museum <laughs> eventually becomes artist-led, you know. When I say artist-led, yeah. it's just carried by artists, in, carried by mm -hmm. the thought and practice of artists, by the support of artists. A little bit mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, the new museum in its beginning, you know, in, yeah. the, in the early yeah. 80s in New York. So, uh, yeah. um, uh, I like that idea, but it's very difficult because, as you know, the museum started off. The museum started off very, very on on kind of a rocky, <laughs> rocky grounds, you know. And yeah. uh, I'm here since a year. We within that year, within that year, we have managed with. Uh, I, I mean, I have to say, I have an incredible team so far. We are still not yeah. enough, but. Uh, the, the people who are really working with me at the museum, they are so dedicated and they are so into it. And I thank them every day for, for everything, that, for their dedication and knowledge. So, and, and of yeah. course, we are, we, are, we are still making this museum. We are still building yeah. the identity of this museum. And I think that mm -hmm. what, what a lot of people, I mean, kind of... Uh, be them people in the field or be them, you know, mm -hmm. general uh, public, uh, to tend to want to everything to happen immediately. No, it takes, it takes 10 years to sort of, you know, yeah. establish a character of an institution. And I think that the public you know? is also, the so, community and the uh, public is also part and, uh, of and this process. They... Exactly, exactly. So, and that is, that is, that is what we are to, to, to uh, uh, reinforce the, the critical, analytical, discursive uh, space. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to expand, you know, uh, in the way in which we curate shows. For mm -hmm. instance, we decided that um, we will only do so, not only, we, uh, because we want to be part of you know, writing uh, uh, another chapter of our art history. And if you look mm -hmm. at our contemporary art history so far, a lot of it has been yeah. kind of looked in group shows, group shows, group shows, and yeah. which are fine, yeah. which were necessary, which were, I mean, I'm not, I am not putting it down at all. Group shows are important. Mm -hmm. I just think that they are very difficult to make, even though I made many <laughs> of them. And and uh, and we want to really, we want to really, <laughs> we want to, we want to really, you know, uh, look at individual practices, like individual voices, and 
in, and within yeah. that also tracing artistic genealogy, tracing artistic mm. families. So uh, the work of uh, uh, female artists is of course important and, and uh, mm. everything that looks at, uh, at the body, feminism, sexuality, protest, you know, I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, it's one of the research uh, strands that we are pursuing at the, at the museum. And this is not just mm -hmm. because, you know, the world is in a huge ebullition now with what is happening in the, in the U.S. or what was triggered in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and upcoming uh, 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 going around the world. I mean, yeah. uh, South mm -hmm. Africa in itself, if we want to stay just in South Africa, has a long history of history. creative yeah. protests where, you know, the arts have been playing, history mm -hmm. uh, have been playing a very important role. So uh, this is what we are, we, are, we are trying to do. So talking about the ecosystem, okay, I'm circling back <laughs> to, to, your, yeah. to, your, uh, to your question, is that... Uh, I think one of the things that I can say, and I say a lot, is that size doesn't matter, content matter, uh, association yeah. matters, collaboration, mm -hmm. collaboration matters, yeah. matters as well. And, uh, and now kind of uh, post, uh, not, we are not post, kind of COVID has also revealed a lot of things mm. that I think are very contextual for us, you know, that we definitely... Yeah have to uh, uh, develop our own kind of set of systems and set of uh, uh, measures and, and to, for our environment, you know. We don't have to recreate, you know, uh, yeah. artistic or, I put it, institutional systems in the art field that yeah. were design else but it's mm -hmm. one big huge loving family that's so not true you know there are there no, are camps no. everywhere the commercial to non-commercial the small to big the you know the i can there are all sorts of yeah. you know uh uh things that are and i really think that we don't have to do that because our experience on our continent is so different from any other spaces that it is really important for us to to write, I mean, to create our own language and to apply our own system. So we will try to, to do that uh, uh, at Zeit Smoka. So reaching out to uh, other colleagues within other mm -hmm. contexts, within other set yeah. of institutions is part of it. Sorry, I speak a lot. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I think that we're all here to listen Paola. to you. But I, I totally, no, I totally agree with you. I've, I've always thought that, uh, you know, the fact that sometimes, especially when in contexts where a lot is lacking, is, it's an opportunity for us to really reflect upon this, you know, as we know, created ecosystems or uh, the Western art field. And, and to mm -hmm. really, uh, we have scope, mm -hmm. time and space to, to invent ourselves. And, but I, I, and I also think that now, mm -hmm. just because we stopped, because yes, that, that's something that we, we, we should be thinking and doing. And we kind of are in a way, um, you know, whether it's raw, whether it's what Bizi did in mm -hmm. Nigeria, whether it's uh, you know Duala, I think that we've we've kind of created mechanisms to 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 still address uh, the issues of the sector, to produce work, and to support um, the works of artists. Uh, but at the same time, we've been traveling a lot, oh. running around. You know, it's from fairs to <laughs> biennials, and and I actually think that uh, perhaps this momentum where we're all stopped somewhere can also be a way to sort of reignite mm -hmm. this this conversation mm -hmm. and, and to start to like redesign uh, missing links or programs together. Yeah. I don't know, how, how do you feel that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I have to say that, uh, I mean, of course, the pandemic issue is a huge and uh, 
quite difficult impact on the museum, you know. Mm -hmm. The museum was just coming out of, was just kind of starting yeah. to, you know, uh, being, being different than it was before. And, mm -hmm. and then COVID happened, which is a, a huge blow for us because uh, mm -hmm. the, if you know, for instance, that uh, like many museum visitation ticketing is a very important aspect. So if you yeah. have to close and you cannot, you know, you cannot uh, have visitors, it has, it of course has a huge impact, financial impact. But at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, from my uh, very uh, Sufi-infused uh, background <laughs> and the sensibility, my main concern yeah. was, uh, was, uh, was, first of all, making sure that uh, uh, I can keep uh, all the jobs, mm -hmm. you know, at the yeah. museum. Yeah. So, uh, and making sure that... Uh, the the staff is uh, is safe and protected, mm -hmm. and making sure that uh, we can continue somehow and use that time. Mm -hmm. uh, more importantly, use that time to mm -hmm. to deepen the the thinking that was anyway already ongoing, but uh, mm -hmm. the acceleration, uh, the kind of less hectic gives gives mm -hmm. you a, a, a certain luxury that you don't mm -hmm. have on a kind of daily run so to speak so yeah. i really i really i really think that this has helped us uh to mm -hmm. to to further refine what kind mm -hmm. of museum we want to make well knowing that it mm -hmm. will be a work in progress for for a long time because yeah. uh, nothing is static, we have to grow, we mm -hmm. have to stay organic, we have sensitive. Mm -hmm. So um, I, uh, I really, in terms yeah. of yeah. and mm -hmm. curatorial and curatorial thinking. So uh, mm -hmm. and also even financial organization, because I'm, mean, you know, I mean, uh, uh, as a museum director, I. I think my curatorial work is kind of like 5% and most of what I do is yeah. managing, you know, uh, mm -hmm. an organization mm -hmm. of, of 55 people. So, um, I, yes, I, and, I, and I think the acceleration is very, is, is important. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't want us to go back to that frenzy of before COVID, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. and, take longer time, you know, have longer conversations, have longer running yeah. shows, uh, invest like more deeper in one thing, so to mm -hmm. speak, and, uh, uh, and get away from this uh, continuous kind of spin, you know. <laughs> No, but I, hope, I want, I to, so. I want I to, so. to, to, to ask you something. Go ahead. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, I mean, I've been, uh, you know, I have a few sheroes in the field and you are one of them. And uh, I've been wow. admiring your work ever since I met you. And, and I mean, you, you, you brought us the Golden Lion in 2013, you know, at the moment that is seven years ago. When you think about it, it seems like since ages, it's basically yesterday, at the moment mm -hmm. where, you know, everybody was talking about this so-called hype uh, and so-called uh, uh, scramble mm -hmm. on, uh, on the contemporary art field on the continent. Mm -hmm. And then you did with uh, uh, Stefano this beautiful, I mean, first of all, the mm -hmm. achievement of, you know, uh, putting up an Angolan pavilion in Venice was yeah. like chapeau. And, uh, <laughs> and, and then winning the Golden Lion uh, uh, for the pavilion is another thing. So we never actually spoke about that. And because I think that when I talk about genealogies, this is also part of the narrative, leads to an institution like Zeitzmoka, you know, 
if you look at it in a in a quiet light. <laughs> You feel more comfortable talking backwards about it uh, because a lot happened and mm -hmm. a lot didn't mm -hmm. happen. But there was a lot of lobbying just mm -hmm. to get that project done. I mean, it was two years of, of lobbying, of political lobbying, imagine. of financial lobbying, mm -hmm. of inventing ways of financing a, a, a project. But the aim was actually always to, as you said before, you know, we have to have a vision. I think that the vision of the Beyond Entropy project as a whole wasn't to, uh, you know, achieve the golden lion, but was to actually look at the landscape, particularly of Angola at the time, where we had had the triennials with a lot of Italy, and then we had a generation of artists that were everywhere, but somehow uh, again, things were fragmented. We, we, we never had a moment where, you know, let's just do something together. Uh, uh, and, and Venice kind of provided this opportunity because it's a biennial where, you know, you need, you need to have the political statement of your country, you know, to allow you to do, but you don't actually have to be invited. So uh, it was part of a wider mm -hmm. geopolitical thinking where of, of the project of Beyond Entropy, whereby, you know, let's look at what we have best. Let's look at culture and really use culture to show politicians how we can shape the image of a country outside of these, you know, the bad things. Um, but it was a difficult conversation to have between uh, ourselves, the, the sector, and the top, the top class. And I think that... Uh, uh, you know, it was a great achievement. We were really, uh, I mean, we were happy. I think that we met, the first time we met, we actually met in the pavilion and we were just so blown up with that whole situation that uh, it, it really took me time to digest and understand what was going on. Uh, and I, I can speak also that for, for mm -hmm. Edson and for Stefano. But I don't have an art school. Let's invest in that. Let's invest in in cultural policy uh, and it didn't happen uh, and, and that's why I never really brought that conversation back uh, and I had to reflect a bit. It didn't happen because the, the, the discussion became very much about what is understood, what was understood as Angolan art at the moment that was very different from what the pavilion was and and uh and so on but, but i'm very happy that mm -hmm. at least in within the practitioners and for the artists it um it sort of opened up you know other fields of possibilities and saying look let's just do what we want to do you know if if, if, if people can actually do their own thing so it, it kind of had a positive contribution in that sense but i think that collectively we lacked momentum and mm -hmm. um and I think that even mm -hmm. in terms of, 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 of the wider looking at the continent now, I know that a lot of countries sort of increased the number of countries then wanting to participate at Venice and really using Venice as a mechanism to, to sort of showcase uh, mm -hmm. uh, art or artist works or support artist works. But I don't think that we've collectively also done mm -hmm. enough. Um, uh, Yet I think that it's it's uh, it it probably we sort of got lost in the you know blown up scramble or discussion of the golden lion and not so much looking at what what it could mean or, or you know what it also revealed. So let's say in the case of Angola, I don't know if you remembered that there was another exhibition that was not the pavilion. Perhaps look at ways in which we can strengthen the sector because if you know they went there and did it. Anyone can do it, really. Uh, and we actually did a very cheap project. Mm -hmm. We had no money whatsoever. So. I mean, I mean, that's why I thought it was brilliant. You know, your way you you sort of uh, shifted, not shifted, kind of transform a difficulty into an advantage, so to speak. And uh, it was brilliant the way, you know, you presented Edson's amazing work. I mean, that series of work, and he continues that. It's so beautiful. Yeah. I saw uh, a few months back, there was a show at Stevenson here in Cape Town of, uh, of yeah. 
I think it's still that body of work that is still developing. It was absolutely yeah. amazing and touching. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, you were talking about um, the momentum of the of the of the Golden Lion and mm -hmm. what it revealed for Angola mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. in many ways, and and also the fact that. The, 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 that momentum should have really given the opportunity to address other fields. Yeah. Or the thing yeah. is that I don't see it as either or, you know, mm -hmm. because a lot of, I mean, our, I mean, we can talk about cultural policies. I, I have my opinions about our, our cultural policies, yeah. which are, we are, which are <laughs> existent, but not, but not the full, yeah. you know, not, the, not effective. So what I, what I want to say is that it's not necessarily either or. And, and I really believe see artistic practice and curatorial practice as a social science, you know, and, uh, yeah. and the social science that is concomitant to everything else. It's not that, mm -hmm. oh no, we don't do something abroad, a kind of grand scale like, uh, like Venice Peña, but we do something mm -hmm. smaller. Uh, all mm -hmm. fields of work, I mean, we, 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 we stand on a huge construction site, you know? Uh, no, I totally uh, agree with uh, you on that. Art historically, curatorially, mm -hmm. artistically. So every little initiative matters you know, in my opinion. This is why I always say size doesn't matter because every little drop on that hot stones or on those hot stones <laughs> matter to, uh, to, uh, to come to create, you know, to create something. Yeah. So it is... No, uh, no I thought about whether it was on the artist's career or our career or anything, uh, but also just the fact that we did it it's in itself um, for me a, a success case, mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that my yeah. my observation has more to do with um, you know how the wider landscape contextually here um, took that because I mean you mm -hmm. know a lot of positive outcomes came from that I think, but we didn't manage to create a structure yeah. for example for the and country to continue to do Venice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the other thing. That's you know, and this is and this is why I think <laughs> we really have to. If if there is any kind of dream and wish that I can have, is really mm -hmm. I'm think we are thinking at the museum very much how we can uh, not only. Uh, be institutionally humble, but mm -hmm. also uh, have a, a sense of solidarity that is mm -hmm. genuine and profound, you know, that is not necessarily mm -hmm. transactional, that is not necessarily, you know, um, opportunistic, uh, that is not, uh, you know, uh, uh, a sort of... Uh, yeah, that is genuine because uh, yeah. we can only come out of this because the whole world is impacted. I mean, we've been impacted anyway since, you know, 500 Forever. years. We have to <laughs> sort of reclaim a space, you know, for existence. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, and uh, at the beginning of COVID, I mean, of the pandemic when it was declared and the and the global anxiety was unleashed, I was just like, yeah. okay, well, people, this is just another disease and we will get out of it, you know, take we'll get through it down. <laughs> of course, it is, uh, yes, you know, <laughs> of course, uh, it is horrible to see so many people losing their lives in, uh, in such a scale. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, it is tragic, but at the same time, we will find, I mean, we are humans. We have gone through multiple, you know, different kind of situation and we are still here. So uh, uh, what I want to say is that 
we are really thinking about how can we be, uh, how can we uh, have solidarity, institutional and, and, uh, and professional solidarity. For, you know, it's much easier said yeah. than done. But the first step is really starting to articulate it, articulate it and also uh, practice it, practice it in, in, uh, in, in the smallest ways possible because it is this addition of small, it is this addition of small acts that with time builds scale, mm -hmm. so to speak. And uh, I've always, I mean, my practice has always been about that you know uh mm -hmm. and this is also a spirit that i'm bringing i brought here to cape town uh mm -hmm. one of the first thing that i did when i arrived here is to invite the field of arts and culture yeah. in cape town you know just to say hello because this is the african tradition you get somewhere you go say hello to your neighbors you know I you think, gather I, and I you do something we together. Tend to forget, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We tend to forget that we we have such a rich and philosophical, uh, strong cultures and social practices. When I said social mm -hmm. practices, that our institutions and organizations can benefit from. And solidarity. No, I totally, I totally get you to mean? you. Um, no, I think uh, particularly coming from an independent field for, and working a lot with other independent practitioners, mm -hmm. I definitely think that solidarity is something mm -hmm. that we practice on a daily basis, basically. We don't name it, but it's embedded in, in a lot of our practices. Uh -huh. and, and I think that it's actually one of the keys mm -hmm. for us within the continent to, to really kind of strengthen our ties and, 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 and sort of create a sustainable and more sort of um, uh, leveled uh, field uh, um, for, for, you know, development of, mm -hmm. of art practices, uh, whether it is a, a more reflection or, you know, mm -hmm. working with artists or anything. So, but, that, but that's also, I think, that a radical shift uh, from how, you know, the ecosystem, as we know it, works. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm totally, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think oh. that we have like 15 minutes left. Um, <laughs> I'd be more questions practiced. you have, yeah. If you have questions, uh, mm -hmm. people who are listening to us, if you have questions, you have to post them, the feed to find your yeah. questions. So if you have any question that you really want us to, mm -hmm. to respond, you, you should post that question. Yes, please, Paula, you were saying something. Yeah. Some, some, somebody made, no, I was saying that I think that this is something that we practice by default, but we don't name it. And, and I think that, mm -hmm. it, as you said, it's important to name mm -hmm. those practices. It's important that we start to also understand how this solidarity can be played and, and used as a tool, as a mechanism for, you know, for our advantage. But yes, mm -hmm. it's, it's a radical shift. Somebody's commenting that it's, mm -hmm. it's being more practiced as, as more women are sort of at the helm of, or ahead of, of, of institutions. I, I don't know. I mean, I... I I wouldn't uh, frame it like that. But that's true. But, but what, what did people expect? You know, of course, <laughs> that's true. It's normal. It's women who care for her. It's normal that it's women who care, you know. And on the, yeah. on the continent, yes. Uh, I mean, the last 20, 25 years of, uh, of our field has been driven by women. And I'm very proud yeah, of, of that. Course. And I think it's very good. Yeah. So, you know, we I think that we have we have what, uh, uh, we have a way to go. Uh, but I, I actually do hope that uh, really this 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 mo I, I feel that this moment is also crucial. Um, you know, on a more and I'm not such a spiritual person, but on a more spiritual level, I feel I feel like this is like a changing game of, of uh, on any level. So I really hope that we can. 
mm-hmm. um, you know, come back, not come back, but we can come out of it uh, better and that we manage to mm-hmm. really uh, practice more of these mechanisms, whether it is the conversations, but whether it is uh, local projects, whether it is supporting each other. Uh, because I think I, I totally believe in, in the, 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 the sort of sustained, sustainable and a stronger um, field for, for, for the art sector mm-hmm. in the continent. Yeah, but for that, you know, uh, we, need, we need to push. You said earlier that we don't have to speak about cultural policies, but cultural policies are, have yeah. an impact on, on our work. Uh, it yeah. is because of lack of strong cultural policies that, you know, all these independent spaces exist in a, in a certain, mm-hmm. I mean, to a certain extent. And, uh, yeah. and I don't necessarily see, uh, unfortunately, I don't necessarily see progress happening on the front of, you know, public cultural mm-hmm. policies, even in a highly sophisticated country like South Africa, you know? So uh, it becomes no, really because, something because that- No, because I think that the approach- inter, In the spirit, what, in the spirit, yeah. No, I think that the approach is always from the top to the bottom. And I think that the big shift is that we really have to think from the bottom to the top. I think that, um, if we have all these spaces, mm-hmm. if, if there is a sector that with regardless of uh, institutional support or not works, how can this inform uh, a new set of cultural policies? How can we think of other mm-hmm. ways to, to, to empower the sector instead of, you know, the same old, uh, you know, let's start to think from above and then create policies that come down. I tell you this, you might be surprised. There are, there are more kind of grassroots, if you want, or mm-hmm. bottom up uh, uh, consultation that happens more than we think. I've been asked mm-hmm. recently uh, to, by the African Union to be on a committee to develop uh, a program, arts and culture program. And for Mm -hmm. the first time, maybe it's just the first time that I've been called by a president. (laughs) But anyway, (laughs) for the first time, uh, I felt, don't link to it, for the first time, I felt like to really listen to the professionals of the field. But that, yeah. So the first meeting went all well, fine, ideas there, ideas that. The second meeting was a catastrophe, you know, because you, you, you fall back. The, I mean, everything fell back into this very bureaucratic, uninformed system mm-hmm. of, you know, derogations and, you know, uh, deference and, you know, to speak, you know. So... Uh, and 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 when you when you look at it, it's 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 very difficult for us. I know you know this. You have this similar experience in Angola and elsewhere. Mm-hmm. You look at it and then you say, well, uh, it is you you know that it is not a, a, a matter of 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 resources because resources are available. They are there. Yeah. They are just not yeah. used intelligently. You know, so yeah. and I think that uh, we are all in this since 20 years, 25 years, how, yeah. whatever long your career is. We are all in this for since so long. And we've been talking mm-hmm. at this for such a long time. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you basically ask yourself, when will that change? You know, that's that's kind of the, yeah. the, the huge dilemma. But that's, I've, I've lost hope in the big institutions. I think you have one. One question. Yeah. Any yeah. ideas surrounding I, solidarity I have, in the fields of art education? Question. Yeah, we have uh, you have three minutes Is that to respond question? to this. Yeah. We have, yeah, four minutes. Well, uh, yeah. I don't know. Do you have any idea? I do, but... 
What do you think? Because we have an amazing, I mean, Zaitsmoka has an amazing art education department, which is run by Liesl Hartmann, who is uh, mm -hmm. uh, just a gem of, uh, of an art educator and uh, mm -hmm. who does incredible programs. So mm -hmm. reach out to Zaitsmoka, for instance. We are happy to share our experience in art education with you. What do you think? Yeah. Um, I don't have any specific ideas uh, directly, but but I think that, uh, and that depends very often also on, on some of the contexts. For example, from here, I would say that from the minute that we start to, well, we start art education earlier on in, in the education system, but also when we start to decolonize a little bit our education system and to look very much at the our own practices, local practices that can inform the system. I think that we can start to, you know, create new languages to, and to really also free up a little bit the, the, the education system from preconceived ideas. There is one interesting question. We still have two minutes. In what ways do you think that the National Pavilion contributes to a critical engagement with art and cultural cultural practices at home. That's it. I guess this is for you. I've never curated the national. <laughs> um, I, I think that it could be a good, a good case study. Um, I think that it's very often, I mean, when we did the pavilion, we came from, and I'll try to cut this short, from a context where there was a very institutionalized oh. way of thinking about art and cultural production. I mean, Culture is what it is. It is. It doesn't have to serve anything, but we come from this. And I think that one of the, that's why I was saying that there were revealed ruptures and, and disruptions, but one of the issues was that somehow it freed also uh, a lot of artists' way of working. Not that everybody became extremely contemporary, but it sort of opened up ways of engaging with the, with, with the art production and with the thoughts and with the field. In a in a very diverse way, so I think that uh, I think that uh, if you can have an impact in that level on on the way that people are positioning themselves or practicing or that's already you know a huge a huge impact. I think that national pavilions can have also political impact, but that's another story. That's another hour of of conversation. Uh, that we don't have. That's another hour. Thank you so much. We have like a few, a few seconds yeah. left, like less than one, less than one minute. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Paula. It has been absolutely invigorating speaking to you. We have to continue. We are in this together, as we all say, in many ways. And uh, yes, we do. have a great evening in Luanda. I miss Luanda. <laughs> I hope I can come back soon. Uh, See, as, as and, soon as uh, the flights open, please the, be the our next, guest here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and the next uh, conversation next Tuesday uh, will be with... Uh, someone that I admire as well. I'm only talking to people I admire. So for you to know, <laughs> all these conversations are about that. I will be talking uh, uh, with uh, Wangechi Mutu, uh, an incredible artist from our field. And, uh, and I think that we'll be addressing uh, the role of our bodies in our spaces or in the world so uh, and in her practice uh, particularly so tune in next Tuesday and uh, thank you very much uh, Paula and thank you everybody say hello thank you for your to all team. my people in Luanda <laughs> I will I will yeah. no, thank you for this Have opportunity and I'll be listening next week <laughs> bye bye yeah Bye. Bye-bye.